So we've gotten our embedded database set up. We've gotten our first unit test written. Now what we want to do is we want to go through and start testing the rest of the repository methods that we actually use in our application. And another important point that you want to take into consideration is that we're working off of JPA repository and JPA repository provides us with countless methods that we can use like find all, find by ID, but we really just want to test the methods that are going to be in our repository and find all is going to be the next one that we are going to test. But let's look at what this is going to look like when we actually finish. Don't get too bogged down about how you know confusing this may look. This may look very confusing, but if you ever get confused, just go back to arrange act assert. Or if you are a fan of BDD, you could also use BDD, but I'm a big fan of arrange act assert, so that's what I am going to use. Okay, so let's just kind of break it down step by step. This part right here is going to be our arrange. This is the actual objects that we are going to have to pass into this method up here. Next, what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to act upon it. And when we act, this part right here is going to be where we are going to actually put these objects into the part that we are trying to test. You may be wondering, well, what is this Pokemon repository.save? We have to save a couple objects into our database beforehand. Otherwise, we won't have any other data because remember, we're working off of an embedded database that is not actually tied to our physical database. You don't want to have unit tests work, working off of a physical database that's attached to your app because then it's reaching into a database and you have no real way to test it because the data that you will receive will be changing constantly, if that makes sense. Okay, so we've gotten a range act. Now let's talk about assert. So assert is going to be, once again, the last part where we are asserting or we are confirming that the tests that we ran are returning the amounts that we actually want. So let's go ahead and let's start typing this thing up. Okay, so first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and type out a good old test annotation and then go down here. We're gonna say public void and it's always void because tests don't actually return anything. We will put the class or the repository of which we plan on actually testing the method that we plan on testing and what we expect from the actual test itself. So we expect this test to return more than one Pokemon. And nothing's going to go into the function because it is a test, always remember that. Then what we want to do is just go up here and paste in uh, the actual assertions that we plan on, or I'm sorry, the arrange that we plan on actually putting into the test. And because we're going to have to put two Pokemon into the database, we're going to go ahead up here and we're going to put uh, two objects that we plan on inputting. Next thing that we wanna do, we're gonna go down here and same exact thing, uh, Pokemon repository. We're gonna save two Pokemon into our embedded database. And we're gonna say Pokemon then we'll go down here, we'll go Pokemon, uh, Pokemon repository. So Pokemon repository dot save, and we're gonna save another one. We're gonna save another Pokemon right here. Then what we are going to do is, this is where we're going to actually put the method that we are going to test. So arrange, act, assert. This is the part where we're, we are going to act. And we want to return a list of Pokemon. And because it's a Pokemon, I'm just gonna call it Pokemon list. And this is the actual method of which we plan on testing. So we'll go find all. And because we're finding all the Pokemon, we don't have to pass anything into it. And then we're going to go down here and write our assertions. This is what we plan on actually getting back from the unit test. So we are confirming that the unit test is running the way that we want it to. And we're going to pass in what we get back from our actual acting. And what we're going to do, you could make these tests as, as strict or as not strict as you want to. Um, this is purely for learning purposes. Feel free to 
toy around and make these more complex, make these assertions really rigid if you want. But I am just going to assert that the Pokemon list has a size of, let's just say, is equal to um, two. And just remember that these assertions are provided to us by, I'm pretty sure it's J unit. Uh, yeah, or assert J. And once again, all these assertions are going to do, this is another package or another um, POM module that is going to assert that all the things that we return from the actual uh, unit test are what we want. Hence why we are testing. So let's go ahead. This looks good. We saved our two Pokemon. Let's go ahead, run our test and see what happens. So we just go ahead, click that green little arrow right there and hopefully it passed, please pass. Yes, so we've got the green arrow. Our unit test is working fine. Let's move on to another unit test. Okay, so we're moving along here. Now what we need to do is we need to test our next method, which is going to be our find by ID. Now, just key point, I'm always going to emphasize this. This method is found in the JPA repository, but we still need to test it because we are using it within our repository. So what this is going to look like, same thing, a range act assert. If you ever get confused, just remember, just go back to the, the handy little acronym, arrange act assert, and these unit tests will begin to make more sense. So what is going to be the arrange? <clears throat> we need to provide our method up here with a Pokemon object or a Pokemon get ID, which is a part of our get Pokemon object. But next thing after that is going to be the act. So the act is going to be the actual method that we have up here. When we are going to test this method, there needs to be data passed into it and we need to arrange and then we need to act and then we need to assert. So after we get done putting all of the actual data that needs to go into the method with, or we provide our method with the, the data that it needs, then that's when we're going to actually run the method and then assert that what the method returned is actually what we want. Okay, so we are in IntelliJ right now. What we need to do is, what I like to do is with a lot of these, they're very redundant. So I'm just gonna go up here, I'm gonna copy this and I am going to just replace a lot of this with um, what the actual method is. So I'm gonna go up here and we are testing the find by ID method. So I'm gonna go find by ID. And what we are going to test is if the actual Pokemon returns a Pokemon. So we'll say returns Pokemon, just like this. So just remember the class, the actual method, method, and then what we actually plan on returning. And with the find by ID method, because we're just testing one actual Pokemon, we don't need two, we don't need to save two. We really just need to save one. And then we're gonna go down here and then just go ahead, delete this. So say find by, so say find by ID. And then what we're going to pass in is going to be our Pokemon object. So we'll say Pokemon get ID. Also make sure that you have Lombok. And because it's an optional, we have to put a get on the end. With optionals, um, just remember that you need that get or else it won't work and it's not a list so we're going to return pokemon just like this and let's see here what kind of assertions do we want to do um we're just going to assert that this actual unit test is not null and that should be enough feel free to make it more strict if you want to but i'm just going to make sure that it returns not null and in my opinion given the simplicity of this app i think that that's really all we need but feel free to make it more complex if you want to so I'm gonna go in here, gonna go ahead, just click the run button, and hopefully we get a green, please, fingers crossed, and we've got our green, we are ready to go. Now, if you don't get green, just remember that you can always click the red button right here, and instead of actually running it like a uh, regular unit test, you can run it in debug mode. So if you, for some reason, you're, it's not working, or there's some kind of bug in it, just remember, you can also debug your test as well too. So don't be afraid to whip out that debug and figure out what's wrong with your unit test and get those unit tests working. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Next, we're gonna be moving on to the rest of the unit test and testing the review repository.